<laughs> Major people in the Battle of Yorktown include from America, George Washington, Marquis de Lafayette, Joseph Paul de Graz, and General Rocking Bow. From Britain, you have Charles Cornwallis and Henry Clinton. James Armistead is arguably one of the most important people from the American Revolution. He was a slave to the William Armistead when he volunteered to serve in the Continental Army in 1781 under Marquise de Lafayette. He was employed as a spy. He successfully infiltrated Cornwallis' headquarters posing as a runaway slave. He gained the respect of Benedict Arnold and General Cornwallis, therefore they started speaking of their plans aloud to him. He helped the Americans trap and conquer Yorktown. After the war, Armistead went back to the farm where he came from since he did not fall under the Act of 1783, allowing slaves who fought in the war to become free. Armistead was considered a slave spy. Lafayette found him and went to the Virginia court demanding he be freed. Two years later, Armistead was freed and changed his last name to Lafayette. He died an American hero in 1830. A brief timeline leading up to Yorktown include May 1781, Rocky Road reaches Washington, June 1781. Washington at once attack New York City, but Rock and Roll convinces him to go south to Yorktown. September 1781, major naval battle in the Chesapeake Bay. French wind sinking more than 10 of their 20 ships. September 1781, Washington and Rock and Roll reach Yorktown. September 28th, the siege of Yorktown begins. September 29th. Cornwallis withdraws his army from his outer barriers due to the surrounding Continental and French army. It's October 9th, the Americans did the first parallel. October 11th, Americans did the second parallel. October 12th, Americans did, tried to take readout, readouts 9 and 10. October 14th, Americans quietly storm readouts 9 and 10 using only bayonets. They take both. October 16th, Cornwallis tries to get his troops across the river, but the storm halts the idea. October 17th, a British drummer appears along with an officer waving a flag, showing a surrender. October 18th and 19th, surrender negotiations are discussed and signed. September 3rd, 1783, the Treaty of Paris is signed. The French involvement was very crucial. They sailed from the Caribbean and France to assist the Americans. General Rocking Bow was one of the most important people of the entire war. Washington wanted to go to New York City and attack right away. Rocking Bow knew that the city would be heavily guarded and convinced Washington to go farther south to Yorktown. On September 8th, the French fleet under, of 28 under the control of General Gross meets the British Navy at Jesuit Bay. The British captain sails a flag signaling for the Navy not to pull off of the attack. This is a very important flag. The British soon withdraw fire and retreat. The, fire, the French had sunk most of their ships. They, had, they also helped surround Yorktown with their army and Navy. They also take control of Redoubt 10. The Yorktown setup. The barriers that the British had set up prior to the siege were gabions, baskets filled with rocks and soil capable to withstand cannon fire, the scenes, woven bundles of sticks capable to withstand cannon fire, readouts, 10 of them, bunkers that were filled with 50 to 70 soldiers and several cannons. American Protection The American Protection were established where parallels, there were two of them. Long holes dug in the ground stretching from 50, to two, 50 yards to 2 miles. Soon the redoubts were taken over and became American redoubts. Beginning the battle, the French Navy surrounds Cornwallis' army at Yorktown in the Chesapeake Bay, protecting the Continental Army from an attack for, by, from the British Navy. Americans take the redoubts. Every redoubt was ordered to retreat into the inner walls of Yorktown except the, most, the two most important redoubts. Readouts 9 and 10. Those two readouts are taken. The French and Americans can turn the cannons around and fire inside the walls of Yorktown. The French and Americans made two different attempts of taking the readouts. The first was unsuccessful, but the second was. Two small earthen forts 
call readouts 9 and 10 stand in the way of completing the second line. They are pounded by the siege weapons. At night, 400 cracked French soldiers are ready to storm one redoubt, and 400 American veterans prepare to take the other. The Americans advance with fixed bayonets and unloaded muskets. Cornwallis is worried. Cornwallis is starting to be scared for his own life. He tries to retreat by sending small boats in the middle of the night to evacuate the town. A storm hits and halts that idea. Soon the British German and officers signal for a surrender by waving a white flag. send one of his subordinates, General Lincoln, will accept the surrender. Your Excellency. Sir, my sword. Sir, you may retain your sword. Did you know? You know this picture of the surrender at Yorktown, right? But what if I told you it's not what you think it is? This picture is of, isn't of General Cornwallis surrendering to Washington, but it's of General O'Hara surrendering to the Americans. Did you know General Cornwallis came down with a sickness and couldn't surrender to Washington? Whether it is true, we do not know. When surrendering, O'Hara tries to surrender to Rakambu, but he quickly halts O'Hara and makes him surrender to Washington. Washington feels disrespected 
when hearing about Cornwallis' illness. Washington makes the second-in-command, O'Hara, surrender to Washington's second-in-command, Lincoln. Well, I hope you guys learned as much as I did.